And I now look to Gina McCarthy to continue the case for the opposition. Here, here. First of all, Mr. President, Mr. Secretary, uh, members of the proponents, thank you very much, and my colleagues in the opposition. First of all, let me begin by asking a couple of questions. The first is, what did I ever do to offend Oxford in this house to be invited to oppose a proposition that is clearly on its face unassailable? What would you do to save the planet? Any goddamn thing I could. That would be my answer. Is that not true? And, and, I get to go after Gail? What is this? What did I do? Look at, do I look like an absolute dolt who is willing to fly across the Atlantic Ocean just to meet my own firing squad? <laughs> So my real question is, why is this house spending its time on this kind of what I consider to be meaningless proposition when we are facing a climate crisis that demands, that demands, that demands serious systemic change now? Why are we, do we have four women together and, uh, and the students Four women who have worked their whole life on trying to address this climate crisis, and we actually have this, this proposal that is really trying not to bring us together in a common cause, but to divide it. We will not be divided. We will not be divided. Now. Women, we are together. Look, so why am I here? God only knows. I ask myself all the time. I am here because I actually oppose this proposition. Not for its substance, because it is divisive. It is asking us to choose between ridiculous choices that no one should have to make. We are facing the biggest challenge of our lives, and if we don't stand together undivided, then we will have no opportunity to actually address this problem and hand the future to our children in a way that any of us can be proud of. I am 65 years old. I am an Irish woman from Boston. Don't tell me that I'm going to lose this fight. And I will stand with anybody who stands with me. I think, I think the four of us women can stand up and I think we can say with absolute certainty three things about climate change to anybody that wants to walk up to us, including anyone at the Trump administration who wants to deny climate science. And we can say three things. Are you ready? One, climate change is real. Two, Man-made emissions have caused it. And number three, that is why women need to rule the world. <laughs> Do we agree? <laughs> totally, right? You know, I oppose this proposition really because I find it a little bit insulting frankly, to be standing here arguing about this proposal when we have something so serious to face as climate change. I mean, seriously. This, the, you, you could substitute, here, here's the proposal, let's not forget what it says. The house would break the law to save the planet. Good for them. <laughs> I oppose it because you could substitute the words break the law with things like the house would require everyone to eat Brussels sprouts every day to save the planet. That is true. It's vegetarian, but it could create a lot of methane emissions. <laughs> right? I mean, you could put anything in there because guess what? We would do anything to save our planet. 
And the second reason why I worry about this proposition is we're actually acting like we're in this to save the planet. The planet doesn't give a damn if climate is changing. It just changes. We care because it's about whether our species is on the planet. So let's get real here, folks. You know, I think, I think for too long we have positioned climate change as if it is something about what happens in 2030, what happens in 2050, what happens in 2100, what happens in a faraway place. We, every time the news talks about climate change, they put a polar bear behind them or falling glaciers. Does this really capture the meaningfulness of climate change in our everyday lives? Does this really engage people in this issue? Or do people go, oh shit, it's those damn environmentalists again, right? What do I care about this? It's not going to happen until 2030. We have to get real because as President Obama said, and God love him, he said this is the first generation to feel the impacts of climate and the very last to do anything about it. So stop talking away f about faraway places. I talk all the time about climate change being the biggest public health, environmental, economic, international security challenge of our time. It is not about tomorrow. It's not about 2030, it is about today. People are dying prematurely today all across the world because of the damages of climate change and it will only get worse. So stop treating it like it's something we can't address or that we don't need to worry about today. The challenge we have is to actually embrace the challenge of climate change and take actions that will actually be better for us today. I am at the School of Public Health at Harvard because I know that people are dying. Kids have asthma attacks from the air pollution that is exacerbated from climate change. I know we are seeing contagious diseases in places where we've never expected them before because vectors change. I know there are 200 million people in India today that don't know whether they're gonna have drinking water tomorrow. Don't talk to me about 2030. Talk to me about today. Talk to me about my family. Talk to me about what it means to me and my neighbors. And talk to me about the future I need to hand to my two grandchildren. Then talk to me about what you do to save the planet. If they're asking me what I do to save my two grandchildren, my answer is anything. And that has to be our answer. Undivided, we have to take care of it, and it doesn't matter the method, it matters that we respect one another and we embrace this challenge and we realize that if we take action on climate change today, we will make our world healthier today. We will make it safer today. We will make it more secure today, and guess what? We will make it more equitable today. Because if you don't think climate change is an equity problem, you are mistaken. Look at who's right in the crosshairs of a changing climate. Look at who ignores those human beings moving forward. And it's you and I, the people who have the, the, the basic privilege to be standing here talking about this. So the challenge that we have is not about science or values or whether we share the same morals. Our challenge is really to talk about the strategies and the tactics that work. And I told you I was 65. That means I lived at the time when Martin Luther King Jr. was, was being civilly disobedient. I lived during the time when my sister was out there being civilly disobedient, much to the chagrin of my parents, during the Vietnam War. Did I think either of them were wrong? Did I not recognize that civil disobedience is a legitimate strategy? Does that mean I want people to ignore one another and disrespect one another? or turn violent, no it doesn't. But civil disobedience is, and protest is a way to gather information and to gather the human spirit together to fight a common cause. That is what it is all about. 
So I argue this, propo this proposition not because I disagree with, with its message, if you will. I disagree because of how it's phrased. I disagree that this is about saving the planet. I know what it's about. And I disagree that we should ever allow anyone to divide us by suggesting we don't all share the same values, suggesting that we won't stand together. So let's do something wild as we think about things moving forward. Let's all of a sudden stop protesting about plans and start getting people to take solutions seriously that are already available to us. Let's demand actions now with what we have so we buy time for a healthier future. That's what we have to do together. And let's make sure that it doesn't turn into violence or actually disengage the very human beings that we need standing with us. If you are interrupting people going to work who can't put food on their family's table the next day because of it, it's not a good strategy. We have to get them to embrace the challenge with us, to stand with us. So in sum, while I oppose this proposition and ask that you think about it, I'm only opposing it because I think it's too little, because I think it's insignificant, and I think this challenge deserves better from this university, and it deserves better from Oxford, and it deserves better for you and me for the sake of my grandchildren. Thank you very much.